Hey guys and welcome to my um, innerspace.co.uk monthly roundup for April. Um, I didn't really get a lot of new stuff last month so um, it's not going to be as packed as some of the uh, other roundups. I'm mainly just going to be focusing on um, a few products. So we're going to be looking at the um, Antelope Zodiac Gold and um, Volticus power supply. Uh, we have the uh, Hi-Fi Man HM700 and RE400B. And um, we have, I'm not got it on me anymore, but we have the uh, Rapsodio Ref Titanium one that I had um, on a couple of week loan in the month that I'll have a little talk about as well. So, um, first of all, I'm just going to talk about the Rapsodios. Um, they're the Rapsodio's new flagship earphone, they're a single dynamic, and um, they're very expensive. They're, well, I think they're 1200 US dollars, so. Um, that's, well, as you, can, as you know, that's very expensive, and it's up there with the top tier universals. I will, I will say that, um, as a bit of a disclaimer, the unit I've got is not in the finalised housing. It's um, an acrylic housing, and now it uses a much bigger aluminium housing, which is said to change the uh, resonances and affect the sound quality. So um, that's worth taking into account. But um, the sound, well, as the name was, applies as reference. It's very analytical. Um, it's got a very tight, fast, um, speedy bass that um, isn't the most in presence. It really lacks sub bass and it lacks any sort of rumble. Um, and the mid bass is that sort of delicate uh, bass you expect with sort of armature drivers, not um, dynamic drivers. The mid range is uh, spectacularly detailed, very airy, almost too airy. As a it, well. It does really have a boost in the upper mid range, which then carries on into the treble, and that's a very wishy washy, airy, um, sibilant area. But it does come, you know, with the fact it's very detailed, great sense of clarity, and um, very uh, engaging qualities to it. Um, it's, the uh, treble is, as I said, it just seems a bit overdone. It's always there, it's always present, it's always quite airy, and um, it creates sort of a wishy-washy effect. Um, so one of the best things about the uh, earphones is the sound stage. It's incredible. It's so wide, great depth to it, and um, it really is the package in terms of sound stage and um, separation and imaging and throwing all the sounds around. But um, the thing is, it didn't seem to have the whole package in terms of sound. The, the thing, I mean, I enjoyed the earphones, and I'm not saying I didn't enjoy them, I um, enjoyed a roll. I didn't start off as much, but I really got into them. I enjoyed um, listening to different music with them. But the lack of sub bass and um, that wishy washy treble at the price just seemed a bit too much, you know. They're definitely really onto something with this uh, the single driver. It's a great t um, single driver, they've got the technology there, but um, I can't recommend it. As such, compared to things like the Trellucent One Plus Two, I've heard the Roxanne Universal demo, and you can get you know a plenty of customs at this price. Um, but it was it wasn't awful. It just wasn't quite up to the caliber of some other Universal monitors. So um, one product I've probably spent the most time of with this month, and I will be sending back next week. Sadly, is the Antelope Zodiac Gold with the uh, uh, Volticus power supply. Um, and this is a, um, well, it's quite an old deck now, actually, considering it was released in 2009, but, um, and it was the flagship of Antelope Audio. Um, it's, you can get the DAC on its own for about two and a half grand, but the whole package together, you can get um, at about 3,300, but apparently you can get it a bit cheaper than that even nowadays, which is great. Um, so you have the Volkers up top, which is just the power supply. So um, you can turn that on there. And then you have the um, Zodiac Gold, down here, which has its own interface. So um, it's a USB DAC, um, as well as many other, um, I mean, the, the feature set is absolutely incredible. Um, in fact, let's turn it around here. Okay, so you can see all the stuff it's got going on here. So at the top we have the analog section, you have uh, inputs and outputs, you have the DAC slash preamp outputs, and you have the um, inputs, you can use it as um, just a headphone amplifier or just a preamp, both balanced and unbalanced of both of them. You then have the uh, power supply input, 
you have a clock input if you have their 10M automatic clock, then you have the uh, six different digital inputs, two coaxial, two out optical, an AES and the USB. I've really only used the USB, and then you have the DJ outputs, which are both balanced and um, in AES, AES and two coaxial. I use the coaxial into the BMC Pure DAC, and um, I'm surprised how much better the Pure DAC sounded. But the real downside to it was it um, didn't support 88.2, and it didn't support um, anything above 96 kilohertz sampling rates, and obviously not DSD either. And with a lot of my music collection in them sampling rates, I just couldn't bear to sort of not have that compatibility. Um, the headphone amplifier at the price, I couldn't say, I couldn't sort of recommend this unit as a um, sort of all-in-one DAC headphone amplifier, like something the BMC Pure DAC I would, because it just didn't have the power to um, really uh, drive things like the HT 500s or my uh, Sennheisers, it sort of was just good with low impedance, sort of mid-tier cans and earphones, and it, enjoyed, it you know, gave you an enjoyable experience, it just didn't give you that sort of high-end sound that I can get from something like my Quest style, um, and obviously didn't have the oomph to drive the harder stuff, so um, it's quite nice if you, you know, use this back in a hi-fi setup and you want to have a bit of casual headphone listening at some times, but I wouldn't recommend it as an all-in-one headphone unit. Um, even though the headphone outputs do have their own individual supply and you can swap the uh, output impedance from 0 and 120 ohms. The real um, magical bit with this is the, uh, is the uh, DAC and um, you can use it as a preamp with this amazing feeling uh, volume pot here. You can hear the clicking sound it's making, it's really high quality. But I've been mainly, mainly using it as a DAC to things like the Quest Tile and my Ulong A28 and plenty of other amps. And um, I weren't ever sure how much a DAC could influence, you know, a sort of headphone rig with sort of headphones such as the ones I'm using and um, keep pushing it on. And the amount that this improved over the BMC in terms of the DAC only was absolutely incredible. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit shocked really. Um, Mainly the sound stage was the biggest difference, and just the realism and the three dimension in the sound that was added. It was almost like there was a I was putting a three D effect on the music, and um, with some binaural recordings I threw at it from Dr. Chesky's Ultimate Headphone Disc. I was absolutely astounded by um, how real the sound stage was. It was the closest I'd got from headphones to a real speaker setup, and you know the DAC was amazing. It also had a real. Uh, forward sound and almost a resonance in the mid range that um, I couldn't really quite put my finger on but um, it was definitely something very special and um, it's the best DAC I've ever owned in this household um, really pushing on from the BMC and absolutely smashing things like the rain and all the other stuff I've, I've used so um, there's that and it's incredibly small you can see how small it's compared to like the likes of the BMC it's really well made you have, the, you have a few different options as well um, you have a mute button, a mono switch, um, and all of that, and it uses some great technology. But um, if you want a complete rundown, I recommend getting over to the website and checking out the uh, full review. And um, it does also come with an absolutely epic remote control. So lastly, um, and I, I didn't unbox this, which was a bit odd, because um, it was quite a nice packaging actually, um, and it came with quite a lot of stuff. Is the uh, Hi Fi Man. HM700, it's the um, Hi-Fi Man's new budget low-end um, digital audio player, DAP, um, or music player, whatever you want to call it. And obviously they've been known as pioneers of the higher-end music player with their 801 originally and now the 901 and 802. And um, what's incredible about this is it's actually really cheap, it's £200 and it comes with a uh, pair of the RE400B, which... You all, if you remember in you know, my um, IM round um, buying guide, I uh, rated the best under £100 earphones the RE400. The review was absolutely astounding of these. They are generally great earphones. But this is the RE400B, and the reason it, the B's there is because these are terminated in a uh, balanced headphone jack, a TRRS balanced headphone jack. So why does it include a balanced pair of earphones? Well, that's because the output on the HM700 itself is balanced. So this is a fully balanced 
portable player. It comes with a hundred pound earphones, and and it's balanced. I mean, this is incredible value right there. Um, it's rather simple. Um, the thing with it being balanced is to use single-ended earphones, you have to use this uh, adapter, which uses the USB output as a ground, and then you plug in your earphones there, which is a bit of hassle. But if I'm honest, although the sound has um, a real, this has a real energetic sound to it. Um, it's quite dynamic. It's quite forward. It's quite big. It's quite bold. It doesn't obviously have the finesse of something like an AK120 or um, my Hi-Fi ATMA9 or um, doesn't, I don't, don't think it has the finesse of the uh, Ibato DX50, which is only a little bit more. Um, so what I'm saying is, it's not the straight up best sounding uh, player. It's just, I mean, it's a great sounding player. I'm really digging the sound signature. It's um, it has a bit of quite a bright treble. Uh, um, it's, you know, it's really energetic, spacious, and all of that. And with balanced earphones, it's great. I mean, with the RE400, it's definitely better than the, what the iBasso DX50 and is. And the same goes for the pairing with the uh, RE600s and my Widing, which are all my balanced earphones. But um, if you're going to use single-ended earphones with it, the uh, adapter becomes a little bit of hassle. And um, generally, um, the other players are as good options. But um, the, the real genius with this is that you're not just buying a player, you're buying a portable rig. You're buying the uh, the entire package, you're buying it with the RE400 or you can pay a bit more and get the RE600 package. And that's what makes this such an epic piece of kit because it's not just a portable player, it's a portable rig. And um, for £200 I don't think you can invest in a better portable rig than the uh, RE400Bs and the HM700 because if I'm going to recommend you a pair of earphones under £100 um, I'm going to I'm going to recommend the RE400s and um, with, a, with a £100 earphones the, the best player you can really get is something like the Theo X3 which is a warm dull sound it's great capability wise but um, the, the, it's sort of a uh, not anyway as good a package as the uh, HM700 um, with that and this pairing is obviously made in mind of each other it's fully balanced which is epic and um, sound wise I'm, I've been blown away now that's not to say this doesn't have its um, its limitations if you look on the back there you can see oh, it's not going to even show there are 32 gigabytes it has that's all the memory it has, but it doesn't have any external storage, so you're limited to that. That's straight up a, uh, a limitation of this. But the thing is, you can actually get a lot more music because it doesn't store anything over 1644.1 and 2448 WAV. So with FLAC, it only has CD quality. So you can store a lot more of that, but then again, that's another limitation. You can't use this high-res files or DSD and all these other buzzwords that other players are using. But that's because this is an entry level player, it's not made to do all that stuff. And what it does do, it does very well. So, um, th this player isn't for everyone. Um, things like the iBasso DX50 and the Theo X3 and the AK100, they've all got a lot of things that this can't do memory, um, these high res capabilities. But um, this has things that they can't do, like the balanced output. And all in all, it really depends what you want. Do you want a player that can do it, do a lot of things, but you have to find an earphone to pair well with it, or do you just want to get a player that comes with an earphone that pairs well with it and will give you a straight up great portable rig that you can't um, that you can't match with other players in terms of synergy, quite that as it, not anywhere near as easily. And I think that's where this really has its selling point. It is a great portable rig. It um, gets you going. Um, you know, it's got a good pricing, and if you want to get straight into the uh, how good earphone and portable rigs and sound, this is a great um, eye opener on that. And the player can still be used in the future if you, you know, terminate your new earphones balanced, and you know you can up, upgrade from it, which is great. So um, I've been thoroughly impressed by this combination. Hi-Fi Man have really outdone themselves there, and um, if you're new to this and you want to get get into it. This is the portable rig that I, I think you have to sort of spring for. Alright, that's sort of all for today. So um, I hope you've been uh, 
you've enjoyed my latest portable, uh, not portable, um, in a space roundup. Um, I'm well. I'm wait, waiting to stay in tomorrow. I'm getting some awesome deliveries, including a Sennheiser HD800 and loads of double helix cables and plenty and plenty and plenty of stuff. So um, expect some awesome stuff coming soon from me. And the next roundup should be a lot more packed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next month.